is the eye simulate. <coughs> it's a simulated monitor with lots of different functions, lots of different screens. It comes with a facilitator pad. And Holly is currently holding the eye simulate in a monitor standby. Okay. So if I just bring up a couple of um, so I can always see yeah. whatever Ali put on and allow me to see, like whatever you want a student to see. The yeah. So you're just going to do a BP. Can you check your BP there, please, Holly? Yeah. It does come with um, a Sats probe. It comes with pretend def simulated defib leads, um, simulated chest leads. But it all sort of the software all comes from here. And again, this is a a wireless piece of equipment. Um, it's got to be plugged in unless you put the little dongle in. So it's great in the sim center, but if we wanted to use it outside or down another floor, we'd have to put the little dongle in. So we can bring up SATS monitor there. So you can use this with your mannequin if you needed to, if you needed to take your mannequin out somewhere or in the lift somewhere, or you can use it with what we call a simulated patient, which is essentially a well person, but they're playing the simulated role of a patient. So it's great for those um, behavioural things, um, especially behavioural pain management. You know, quite often you'll get people going, oh, it's eight out of 10, selfie on the phone, mm. or, you know, sleeping peacefully. Then you do the behavioural pain score, they don't have a tachycardia, they don't have increased resps, they're quite relaxed, so. And it's great for that visual feedback as well. If you say, oh, I'm just going to check your blood pressure. How, how many little nanas go, oh, that's sore, love, that's sore. Yeah. You know, whereas on a mannequin, you don't get that visual feedback. So you can use this anywhere you'd like, even if you've got 10 minutes in the tea room with your student. We can just say, OK, let's just do a very quick talk through about one of your patients that you've got in. OK, so I'm just going to stop there. So Holly, this is Mary Sputum when she was admitted, as you can see, it's just nice and clear. Okay, do you mind doing a set? No. Yeah, do you want to, do you mind just doing a quick set of obs on Mary for me, please? Okay. Yeah. So I'll connect the ECG. Yep. Yeah. And as you can see, all those are within normal parameters. Okay, this is no patient. We're just imagining that Mary's in the bed there. Okay. Two days later, Holly's called into Mary's room. And now Mary's coughing up that. Yep. So what we can do is, Holly does a set of obs on her. Okay, and you can see that her parameters have changed. So again, no patient, but you've got your clinical picture. So we could talk around that and say, okay, Holly, what, is there anything on there that would concern you? Yeah, like the, the heart rate a little fast and mm -hmm. sat the propane. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, resps are quite, quite high. high. Yeah. Well. Okay. So what do you think's going on there, Holly, looking at that sort of clinical picture and she's grimacing a bit and she's coughing up this. She probably have an infection, is yeah. she concerned of yeah. abnormal discharge? Yeah. So, yeah, we'll uh, let the doctor know. Yep, okay. Me. Anything else that could be causing a tachycardia, do you think, in Mary? Uh, stress? Or yep. Uh, yep. Or stress. Uh, infection? Anxiety. Infection, yeah. She might be worried about nobody visiting her. She might be worried that in two days she's in hospital. Come, people come to hospital expect to get better. They don't expect to get worse, do they? Yeah. Later on that night, she now starts coughing up this. There's some blood-stained sputum. She's got increased chest pain. Um, the doctor said he'd come, but he didn't come because he was a little bit busy. Um, have yeah. What do you think could be going on with her there? Like heart rate. Really high down in the set, really yep. drop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he's really concerned, so I end respiration. Yep. High as well. And also, her BP's dropped as well. Yeah. Okay, so does that make sense? You can just do a very quick sort of talk through with a tiny bit of moulage. 
Um, just the pressure you're using is that the, is it, yeah, you can get the arterial waveform on it, or you can just um, or you can just get your numerical value. Because you can set this monitor up as to what you want, just as a basic three-lead monitor. You can get outline CVP on it, end tidal CO2. Um, you can get your students used to just looking at different waveforms, um, get them to talk about what they're looking for in the waveforms, get show them abnormal waveforms as well, just so they know what's sort of going on, what sort of things to look for. Okay, so. If we needed to move into a more sort of critical situation, we can change that monitor into an automated external defib. So we can teach um, about the AED, what's the difference between an AED, what's the difference between a manual defibrillator or one that's used in an automatic mode. And because it's not discharging um, electricity, it's much safer. And it works out a lot cheaper. When we use our defib pads, they're $65 each, and we can only use them three times. We're shocking at 200 joules, so it's a live shock. So if you're on the patient's chest or somebody's stuck behind the bed and nobody's safe, then you can get, not that it's happened here, but um, it's happened in real life where people have actually got a, got a so shock. You, get, you do actually turn it up to 200 in yeah. the shock at 200? Okay. We do, yeah. But this is, um, if you're just talking around DFib, if you're talking about um, shockable rhythms, or just generally sort of safety around the DFib, this is a non-sort of confronting way to sort of do it. I mean, to me, I'm still haunted by this sound. Can you charge your DFib up for me, please, Holly? I hear that sound in my worst nightmares, and I've been around defibs for longer than I'd care to mention, and it still makes me feel nervous. Yeah. And I'm an ILS instructor, so I'm... Can you just shock your patient there, please? So, um, yeah. So you can change it into any sort of uh, mode that you want. Monitor. I'll show you the AED mode. There we go. So it just looks like a tiny little defibrillator. It looks even better if it comes in this swish pocket. Yeah. I'll just show you the defib pads. Yeah. You can take this home and shock the teddies with it as long as it connects to your, um, just needs to connect to a, a Wi-Fi network. But again, it's good for taking out on the field. It's good for if you're using anything um, around water, if you, if you want to take it to the swimming pool. You know, you wouldn't shock somebody in a pool of water, but if you wanted to train people around water or in the rain, because not everybody who's sick collapses in the bed flat in the back like that. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. Old people seem inordinately f um, fond of having a cardiac arrest in the bath for some reason. Yeah. Okay, so... Holly, can you turn your AED on, please? Just on the little green button. And like any um, automated external defib, it will tell you to put the pads on. Because, um, you know, simulated patients can be a confederate or, as Chris has been, a, he's been a simulated patient, but we can't pay him enough to have 200 joules up through him, but we can use the eye simulate on him. So it's giving you that visual effect that you're doing it, but with a safety. So I just confirm on my pad, we've attached the pads. Hang on, I'll put you in a non-shockable rhythm. <laughs> How long does that feel in real life? Feels like an eternity, doesn't it? Okay, do you want a shocky table? There you go. Okay. And then obviously it'll count down from two minutes and then it'll do another analysis. So any questions around the eye simulator? I know it's a bit of a whistle stop too with all this equipment, but it's invaluable for safety. It's invaluable for teaching on the run, on the go, um, getting people familiar with using sort of electronic equipment, um, familiarising people with different defibs. Um, and it's, it's portable, as long as you take your little dongle if you want to take it outside. You know, how would you defib somebody that was sat upright in a car? That sort of thing. We've got a spinal injuries unit downstairs, people are quadriplegic in little chairs. What, what would you do there? You know, you can take this downstairs and do some, you know, simulated observations on them. And it's just... 
Just dead easy, you can take it anywhere. Like I say, you don't need a mannequin, don't need a simulated patient, maybe just a bit of moulage if you want, I'll just talk about. There's no electricity, this is just tie wrap to the back of the thing. There you are, it's tie wrap to the handle, so. In my position, technology is my best friend and it's also my worst enemy, because it inevitably is gonna fail, especially if I don't know how to use it. Um, give it a play, it's pretty intuitive as far as push button features go. Mm. The um, real thing to keep in mind is, as Holly and Allison awesome were saying, if you are quite from the power source, um, it has a it internal Wi Fi in here. Did you guys show them? Sorry. No, I didn't. Sorry. It has an internal Wi Fi in here. If you unplug it from power, you lose connection. And so you'll be stuck on whatever monitor that you're on. Hmm. So you've got to be in a Wi-Fi area really to use it. Yeah, and that's why you can, if you're taking it outside, you can use like a little external um, dongle. device, dongle, whatever they call. Um, yeah. it's just, there's cool. levels of simulation, yeah. you know. Obviously yeah. this was a very, very low fidelity, didn't have a patient even, um, hmm. just to talk through. Yeah. But yeah, when we go through scenario writing, we'll talk about the different scenarios that you can so what we're going to do next is going to go back into the sim room and we're going to go through classic, sim and classic as a large group because we've set sim and classic up as you would run it in one room with no two way mirror, nothing else. It's just you're in a room like this and you're running a scenario because I know some of you have to do it that way. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to show you how to set that up. Um, again, a lot of this stuff is that we're going to talk about is touched upon in your 25 page user guide. That's from Kaiser that I've chopped. Gotta give them reference. <laughs>